Hey everybody, Steve here, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about drum tuning. Over the last several years I've been getting a lot of requests from people to talk about how uh, I do tuning on drums and drum sets, snare drums and drum sets. And uh, I thought I'd take a little time to do that here today, talk to you about it. I'm not going to do anything physically with the drum here, I'm going to talk about it, and then when we post this video up I'm going to include some links to uh, videos that I have done so you can hear examples of what the tuning sounds like. I think that's the easiest way. So first I'm going to tell you about the philosophy we have behind tuning the drums. And keep in mind, this is a philosophy developed back in the 40s, 50s, when everything was acoustic for the most part. Uh, there wasn't a lot of amplification. You weren't getting uh, drum sets close mic going out through house mixes and the like. You had to reach the audience with your sound all the time. So the general consensus there, and the way I learned on tuning, was this way. Your bottom head is for resonance. Your top head is for pitch. The way we learned to tune, then, was to tune the bottom head, and I'll use a representative example. Let's say we tune the bottom head one turn, okay? Then we tune the top head, let's say one and a half turns per rod. And the general consensus here was that you kept the top head tighter than the bottom. The bottom is for resonance, the top is for pitch. I do that on all drums, snare drums, bass drums, toms, everything. Concept here being, if that bottom head is the resonant head, then if that head is a little looser, the drum will resonate more, the sound will project out to the audience more. And that's the general concept. I used it, I've used it since I started playing 50 years ago, and I still use it today and it works really well for me. Also, with the top head being a little tighter than the bottom, the top head is going to give you more rebound and make it easier for you to play. If you are used to using rebound for things like double strokes and the like, that rebound is going to make your job easier. So if you think about the concepts of tuning here, one of the things I've talked to some people about is there is no right or wrong way for tuning. I'm just telling you what I do and if it works for you that's great, if it doesn't that's okay. I know a lot of people who tune their bottom heads tighter than the top heads. And what you do in that situation is, for the most part, sound is going to push up toward you, the player. Because that bottom head being so tight, the drum's not going to resonate as much and the sound's not going to push outward. Now, for a solution like that, if you're playing acoustically and you're sitting behind the kit, you think you're killing it because the kit sounds great, but out in the audience, they can't hear your toms. And the flip side of that, though, is a lot of guys who tune that way are in environments where they're close mic'd. So that sound is actually okay when you've got mics placed around the drums and it's going in through a house mix out to the audience. Then it's fine, it works out well. But in a pure acoustic environment, I still tend to favor the top head being tighter than the bottom head and relatively different. You know, if you're one and a half turns on the top, one turn on the bottom. Snare drums, toms, bass drums, all the drums. Now, if you want to tune inordinately high, where you're taking that uh, top head up quite a bit, then of course you're going to want to bring that bottom head up some uh, proportionately so that you're maybe, you know, arguably maybe 30% tighter on the top than you are on the bottom. Something along those lines. I also tune by ear, no drum dials. And you, I, in my opinion, you should get used to tuning by ear. Let your ear do the work. And when you tune the drum, you're not looking to tune to a specific note. You're looking to tune to pleasing intervals. Most drums will have a sweet spot or a sweet range. On a Craviato solid shell kit, the range is enormous because the shells will have huge tuning ranges. But generally, when I think about tuning drums, I think about tuning, let's just take a normal four piece. Uh, a 13, a 16, a 22, and a snare drum. I want that bass drum to be like the root note of the chord, the floor tom to be like the third, and the mount of tom to be like the fifth. So you've got a pleasing sound, whether it's a major triad or a minor triad, and you're looking for relative pitches, not pure, complete notes, because you can't really tune this instrument to a pure note without any overtones. It's just not designed that way. But you can tune it to the pitches, and it works. Now for me, that means what I use in the way of heads is also fairly simple. I use coated ambassadors on the top, and coated ambassadors or clear ambassadors on the bottom, whatever you prefer. It doesn't matter one way or the other. I don't really use any muffling at all. On bass drums, I generally take the bass drum and play it wide open with that coated ambassador on the back and a smooth white on the front. If I need a little bit of muffling on a drum, 
what I do is I do a very simple thing. I mean, I reach in my pocket here and take out this handkerchief. And what I would do is I just kind of take this handkerchief out, kind of roll it up like that, and tuck it down in the area where the bass drum pedal connects up to the head. That will take just a tiny, tiny bit of the mu muffling in that you need. Take some of those overtones out. If you're playing in a really live room where you've got uh, a lot of glass, a lot of hardwood, maybe you've got uh, tile floors, not a lot of carpeting to absorb the sound. You want to trim it down a little bit, you can do that. On your toms, you could use a little uh, bit of moon gel to take a little bit of that out. So in a general sense, it's not really uh, a great mystery. This is just the way I look at the tuning uh, equation. It's what works really well for me. Uh, I like the way the drums respond. I like the way they sound. They sound pleasing to me behind the kit. They sound pleasing, as we've been told, to people who are listening to the kit either live or on recordings. So what I would do is encourage you to play around with this idea for tuning and see if it works for you. Again, there's no right, there's no wrong. So don't, you know, don't go, hey, you're wrong about tuning. Hey, that's fine. Tune the way it works for you. I'm just giving you an alternative based on what we've experienced and what I've experienced over the years. So I would consider it a great benefit if you would give it a try. If you are having trouble with your drum sounds, try that. See if it improves it for you and just kind of take it from there. If you have any questions about this, feel free to email me at vintagedrums at AOL.com and I will be happy to answer any specific questions about tuning or head choices or things like that that you might have. And if you're having any trouble with this, I'd be glad to talk to you about it and uh, see what happens. So uh, hopefully this will uh, clear the, uh, the air a little bit about what we do in the way of tuning and try it and see if it works for you and let me know your results. Thanks.